Welcome to another video. I am the Starman and in this video I'm going to be talking about a comet which is supposed to light up our skies. I say light up, don't get your hopes up. I don't want to hype up this comet like the media can do but we do happen to have a comet in our skies at the moment. In fact most of the time there are comets around out there that you can actually see but most of them do tend to be fairly faint and you need telescopes or something like that to be able to see it. Now this comet that I'm talking about, in fact, I just have to read this magazine here. I'm gonna show you this here. Can you read that there? This is out of the Sky at Night magazine. It's called Comet C2023 A3 Chishunshunshun Atlas. So there you go. It's a bit of a, it's a bit of a mouthful that. Now, um, my history with comets only really goes back to around about, what, something like 2013, 12 or something like that. I don't know. In fact, I don't know if you can see behind me. I have got a picture of Blackpool Tower on the screen there with a beautiful comet. Comet Neowise of 2020. That was a really, really bright comet in 2020. I'll put the big picture on the screen now so you can check it out. In fact, I think I had that, I did have that picture published quite a few times in the paper, so I'll stick it on the screen for you now. Now, Comet Neowise, as you can see there, was a bit of an anomaly, actually, yeah. It kind of came from nowhere. Well, they don't come from nowhere, these comets. I'll talk about that in a minute. But yeah, so my history with comets only goes back to around about 2011 or 12 or something like that. I didn't get to see Halley's Comet. I think it was 1986, was it? 1986? And I never saw Comet hale -Bopp, which loads of people talk about hale -Bopp. Oh, it was this amazing comet that lit up the whole sky with a big long tail. I never saw it. I think I was interested back then, but I probably didn't know how to look for these sort of things. They're not the sort of things that you can just go outside and just look up and see them. Uh, I mean, even in the case of Halley's Comet, which is a 70 year, something like a 70, is it 72 year period comet? So they come into the inner orbit of the solar system, they come in close to the sun and then they go back out again. They tend to have very, very extreme trajectories. Halley's Comet is actually one of the least extreme. So it comes around every 70 odd years but I never saw it. And even a comet like that, you would probably need to go somewhere dark to be able to see it and you'd need to know where to look and when to look. So yeah, so the first comet that I ever saw was Pan-STARRS. And I'll put a picture of that, or I'll put a couple of pictures of it on the screen for you. Now, that first appeared to us in the twilight as it went around the sun, yeah? So I'm just showing you some pictures now of comet Pan Stars. I think this was taken in 2013. I'm not too sure, but uh, it was uh, it was bright enough to be able to see through binoculars, but you couldn't really see it by eye. You could but maybe, if you had good eyesight and you knew where to look, you could probably see it. But anyway, comets are essentially the bodies of the solar system, a bit like they're not huge, they're not like on the scale of planets or moons or anything like that. They're probably on the scale of, say, Blackpool, you know, like in size. You know, some of them are quite big. I think they landed a probe on one, didn't they? Um, was it Comet Churimenko Geras? Another big name comet. They landed a probe. They actually landed on it. Uh, the, yeah, so that was something. Um, so they're essentially, I think about an asteroid that's got a lot of ice packed onto it because these comets, they come from a way, way out in the solar system. The furthest reaches of the solar system, which is, I think it's theoretical. Don't, don't hold me to that, but there's a place called the Oort Cloud named after a, a Dutch astronomer called Jans Oort. And he theorized that there must be this icy ring around the solar system, well beyond the, the orbits of uh, our outer planets, uh, Neptune and Uranus, well beyond Pluto, that sort of thing. And it's so icy out there, so cold that these things come in, they come in from outside there into the solar system. And when they get close to the sun, that's when the light up, that's when the ice starts to break away. It starts to sublimate and it starts to form a coma and it leaves a tail behind it. So that's how we know comets because they've been talked about for hundreds of years. They've lit up the skies 
Chinese people saw them. And that's what a comet is. It's essentially, some astronomers call them a dirty snowball. So basically it's just like an asteroid, but it's got a lot of ice on it. And when they come in to the inner solar system and they go around the sun, some of them get a little bit too close to the sun and they can break up when they come on the other side. So they do, they start to form this coma and they have the big long tail of course, and that's what we know a comet is. We've got this big long tail. Um, now the, the next comet I saw was called Comet Ison. I believe this was around about 2014, I might be wrong, 10 years ago or so. And that was called a Sun Grazer Comet because it went around the sun, it lit up, you could see it, but you did need binoculars. Um, but unfortunately it got too close to the sun. It was called a Sun Grazer Comet and when it came out on the other side, it, uh, well, it just broke up into bits and that was the end of Comet Ice on, I'm afraid. But I did get a picture of it before it evaporated. But anyway, let's get on to this comet. And like I say, I don't want to hype this up. Now the media, they might be hyping it up, I don't know. If you saw my last video about Saturn, you've got to see Saturn this month, otherwise you're going to miss it, was completely hyped up by the media. All it was was that Saturn was at opposition. You can check the video out for yourself and you can see the way that the media talk about these things. But anyway, Com Comet Atlas, we'll just call it Comet Atlas, is predicted to become naked eye visibility. Now at the moment, as I'm filming this video, I'm filming this on the 28th of September. Now it's already just about made its closest approach to the sun. So up until this date, it's possible to have seen it if you were very, very lucky, although I haven't even bothered going out to have a look at it, but it was possible to see it before the sunrise, but it was very, very close to the sun. So I'm doing this video now to let you know, make a date for any time from about the 10th of October. There's a chance that you might be able to see this comet, Comet Atlas, after the sun sets. Now I'm in a good place because I'm in Blackpool. Now when the sun sets, there's a chance that the comet could be following the sun. You could be able to see it, but it'll be in the twilight, you see. It'll have come round the sun. So instead of seeing it before dawn, before it made its pass around the sun, we're now seeing it after sunset because it's now on the other side of the sun. And the tail, you know the tail I was talking about, that's gonna go off into a different direction as well. So uh, these are the things to look out for. Okay, so they reckon it could get to naked eye visibility. Now, I would be a little bit cautious there. And if you want to try and spot it, like I say, make a date from any time from the 10th of October onwards, we're probably looking more like the 15th could be a good time because that's when it gets a little bit further away, a little bit less close to the sun as we see it and not, maybe not so much in that really, really bright twilight. Maybe take some binoculars, wait until the sun has gone down before you take your binoculars out and have a look around. If you happen to get a clear sunset, um, any time from the 10th of October towards the 15th and maybe sometime after after that, I don't know, I might do an update. I might even do a video about it, comet spotting, we'll try that shall we? But there is a chance to see this comet in October, so I thought I'd do this video to tell you a little bit about it, but not build your hopes up too much because it could be, if it's as bright as the ones I was just showing you before, I saw and pan stars as I saw them in the sunset. I managed to get those photographs of, of them. You can certainly, hopefully, be able to get a picture of it, even if you can't see it by eye. So if you want the chance to get a picture of a comet, um, keep watching this channel because I will be going out there, hopefully, if the weather's good enough, and trying to photograph this comet. So um, that's the, the deal. So it's saying here it's had a long journey. They reckon this is the first time it's gone around the sun according to this, which, uh, um, yeah, according to this, it says here, the first close encounter with our star having traveled to the inner solar system from the Oort cloud, a theorized, it says here theorized, so I was right, outer region, 2000 to 200,000 AU from our sun. And an AU is an astronomical unit. AU stands for 
astronomical unit the mean distance between the Earth and the Sun. So that's about 92, 93 million miles. Imagine that times by 2,000 to 200,000. That's a very, very long way. And it's going to be really cold out there. No surprise that the there's ice on the comet. So, so there you go. Um, set a date in your diary. We have a comet. It's there. It's going around the sun as I film this video. And as we get into October, we're really hoping that it does become naked eye. Uh, but like I say, don't get your hopes up. Follow this channel. I will go out there looking for it. I'm going to probably start looking for it from the 10th. We have a nice flat horizon here in Blackpool. That's where I took the pictures of the other comets, pan stars and comet ice on. I also got a picture of comet pan stars next to the Andromeda galaxy. How about that? So it actually moved through the sky and we got to see it move through different constellations. Eventually it went in the same part of the sky as the Andromeda galaxy. It was nowhere near the Andromeda galaxy, but it just happened to be in the same part of the sky. Absolutely amazing. So you can see these comets if they're bright enough and if you know where to look and when to look. So that's Comet Atlas. I'm not going to say that name because it's just too long. So keep an eye on this channel. I'll be going out and seeing if I can photograph it, see if I can spot it because it's fun going out to spot comets. So look out for the video and uh, make a note in your diary, of course, and see if you can spot it yourself. And uh, that's it for this video. And uh, as I always say at the end, don't forget to keep looking up.